There he is. Sir content. You got it? Yeah. I finally went I went to charter and there it was. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry. I, I I you I only have your charter account for some reason. Or like when uh, I go to punch in dad, just, it just it, defaults to that. Oh, I see. Well it's just Mike Bigner at Gmail. Yeah. yeah no no, no decimal or anything. So right. so how you doing? I'm doing all right. Uh tired. I mean you're probably the same. Yeah, yeah. You got actually uh, this has been a pretty good week. Oh yeah. The steroid they gave me helped. So nice. And yesterday was really good. I actually had wings. Ooh. First time in 15 years or so, or mm -hmm. plus years. Mm -hmm. We went out to uh, uh, Emily and Donnie's to look at dresses, and Emily found a dress. So it was nice. Happy. And we went out to this wings place that's amazing, uh, not far from their house. Like, mm -hmm. uh, like that they usually go? Or? No, they had, they've been trying to get in there, and it's just it's always packed. Mm -hmm. And the wings are really pretty damn good, I have to say. As I remember, they were pretty good, I mean, most places, but these were really good. Mm -hmm. So if we go over there, we'll have to do takeout from there sometimes. It's right. Pretty good. Nice. So you heard the news about uh, Trump's uh, COVID? I did. Uh, I'm having a hard October time. feeling surprise? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's funny because everybody's, you know, you've got this sort of performative... Yeah, oh, we hope for a speedy recovery, yes. right, right? Which you would never hear that from like Donald Trump if Joe Biden got, you know no, what I mean? Like none right. of these Republicans would be saying and that. So it makes you wonder if he actually has COVID, right? Right, and then you got the people who are uh, em embracing the catharsis, yeah. um, and then there's obviously the, the debate yeah. about whether or not it actually is, like yeah. whether or not he actually does have it. The thing that I keep coming back to though is like. I don't see what the upside to faking it is. Like, he's going to have to, like, stop doing campaign rallies for a couple weeks. Yeah, right? yeah. Which is the only thing that his campaign is doing to try to win the election, right? But, but on the other hand, it's probably a uh, calculated risk. You know, which, you know, how much more is he going to get from these uh, rallies? And maybe they convinced him, if we go with the fake... <laughs> We may garner more sympathy and win some. Other, on the other hand, though, it's going to be hard for hard, hard for him to explain to his followers not to wear masks. I mean, well, so I think the thing is, the the thing when I think about if it's if it's a fake story is it it like energizes the base because the base is not going to wear a mask no matter what, right? And if he winds up being totally right. fine, which I imagine he will be. Um, then he just comes out and says, see, I had COVID. I'm in the age yeah. range that's extra right. at risk. And I was fine. It was mild. Yeah. Everybody's even, blowing it out of proportion. Even though I'm morbidly obese, uh, pre-diabetic, and has a BMA of 30.5. Right. But so. if, if he winds up being totally fine, then he just says, see, it's no big deal. See, right? Because the thing is, even if he's totally fine, they're still reporting if it is a true case of COVID, he may have other respiratory issues down the road. Well, no, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I know, but like if he can like cover it, that part up, right. Yeah. I mean, if he, if he doesn't have it, then he doesn't have it. And then there are right. no long-term risks. And then he still right. appears to have like conquered it. Yeah. Um, but I also Except just feel like, does he really get sympathy at this point from the undecideds, the people who are like, yeah. oh, he's been telling us it's no big deal, then he gets it and like he takes two weeks off, but like we're still unemployed, we're still like struggling for work, we're getting sick, right? Like I, I don't know that it plays well to anybody outside of the base. Well, they're talking about four weeks and most, a lot of people it's even more than four weeks. Right. I mean, look at uh, 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 Cuomo's brother there. Uh, uh, what's his name? Chris Cuomo. Chris Cuomo. He, it took him a while. I know for sure. You know. But yeah, I guess I guess I just don't know because like if if I I mean it's hard to speak of it because I'm obviously like not an undecided voter and even if I were, there's no chance that like Trump would be the person I would vote for. But right. um, like if I'm like an undecided or like an or not even undecided but just like somebody who doesn't regularly vote who's just like too busy with the daily grind 
right, to really pay much mind. When I, when I look out, I see, you know, if I get sick with COVID, I can't take right. four weeks off. There's no right. relief bill being passed, right? right. Uh, but he gets sick and he gets four weeks off and also like the best health care, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but so it's surprising. I, I, I don't know that it plays to, to, to those people. I know. If, if it is a calculated risk, it's, it's a real long shot. I mean, the, the only <laughs> other side is if it is fake. Kind of either way, I think that there's very little coherence to their campaign strategy. Like, it's not a campaign to win, right? He just mm -hmm. rallies his base. They're just like rallies for him, basically, and for <laughs> donations. Right. But he's not trying to expand that, right? What he has been doing has been working on ways to try and steal the election, right? Like right. stacking the courts, trying to rush the Supreme Court thing, uh, like yeah. the delegitimizing of the elections pre of the elect the results preemptively. Throw this in, and now you can say, "Well, I was sick for the last month." On this top, isn't the, fair. Was in my the ball took a bad hop, right? <laughs> But you know, you, but they're not faking Hope Hicks's, um, you know, COVID, and she was close to him, and all the other. There's a there's a whole bunch of. Oh no! Yeah, I, I don't think that so it's fake. I don't. It's think It's conceivable. That it's fake. It could be real. I mean, right. And it would be a, there would be an irony in him uh, in the in the public proclaiming fake news coming out of him. Right. When it's always been the other way around, they're going to demand you know the COVID report. Mm -hmm. you know, a copy of the COVID report that's, I, you're right though, the, the fact that there's no transparency, which is not unusual for presidents who have illnesses. Right. There's a lack of, generally a lack of transparency. Right. No, no president wants to be known as, you know, I have mm -hmm. polio or I have, you know, yeah. I'm sick with something, right? I mean, he wasn't that healthy to begin with. I mean, there's some questions about- Well, he had that doctor's note <laughs> from that yeah. totally real yeah. doctor. <laughs> That creepy doctor. <laughs> well, that's the other thing, too, is like all of the things right now that are paralleling 2016, but in reverse, but not get right. So we got the Supreme Court seat opened yeah. way before the election in 2016. Yeah. They held that up now with like weeks before. Like they're also, I was just sort of reading that some Senate Republicans are trying to get McConnell to just like dismiss Congress for a while just because they're really yeah. worried. And, you know, obviously if they do, like already they were rushing, they were going to have to break even more norms to get this appointed before the, because I think it usually yeah. takes like two months. It about. takes like 70 days normally. Yeah. yeah. So and they really rush the schedule. Right. So they were going to break all these rules and norms and, and traditions, which, you know, some of that is on us for never codifying anything, but um, not that it really matters that much, but it uh, here's a, here's another theory. I thought about this, and maybe I was drunk when I thought about it, but um, what if we had all the other liberal justices decide to retire exactly at this moment? Then it puts like a feeding frenzy in front of the Republicans, and they have to figure out, oh my God, we have a shot at running the table. Do you think it would be enough to jam up the work so that they couldn't get it done before? I wouldn't want to risk that. Risk that, <laughs> uh, knowing full well that if the Repu if the Democrats get, you know, get the Senate, which is the big right. thing, That's they the can other still thing. expand the court if they want, even though they're not willing to say that. But that's that's always mm. an option on the table. Yeah. Even though they shouldn't say that because you don't know if you're going to get the Senate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? I mean, I think I think just not knowing if you're going to get the Senate and not having any idea like really how the election is gonna go. Like I feel confident about what the numbers are gonna look like, but I don't know how, I mean, there's gonna be so many challenges in the courts that ultimately we're gonna have another election decided by the courts, I think. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's, yeah, I'm, I don't, I'm a little, I mean, I think he'll challenge them. I don't know that they'll like, if the numbers are big enough, I don't know that it like yeah, that's that's court. the thing. Um, if it's that, if it's close, the court may have to step in, but hopefully we'll we'll get a big enough out turnout that we can, you know, just not even. Of course, it, with the mail-in ballots, it's going to be tougher. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a little longer. But you, and what they're saying is, you may see Trump 
you know, with a lead for the mm -hmm. for the in person stuff, and not to panic because the it's going to take about a week or so before the uh, mail and stuff comes yeah, in. Yeah, this is sort and of why I think. Yeah, but I sort of think yeah. like. Oh. I sort of think about it as like an unforced error to like discourage for the Democrats to discourage in-person voting. I know it's going to vary yeah. in place to place and for per like I do think mail-in ballots should be expanded, especially just in general, but also especially during a pandemic because not everybody does feel safe going right. to the grocery store or whatever. I where I live, I can't explain why right. I don't feel safe going to vote in person yeah, you're, you're if right. I go, like I, I spend more time in the grocery though. store and there's more people there but you know if I had to wait six hours yeah. uh, in line in yeah. a city yeah. I wouldn't feel that way and it's not um, like that generally it's not like that here although this year they're moving the uh, polling locations for uh, our precincts one three and five mm -hmm. back to uh, the high school with so the whole town's going to be in one place right so there may be lines so I feel and, like I feel like it would have been better. Well, also like early voting. Like I feel I don't know if yeah. they've like expanded that, but like making early yeah, but, voting available yeah. like sooner than it usually is would be good too. Yeah, um, be good so too. I, I kind of have been telling people who who feel okay voting in person to like either vote in person on election day or vote do early voting because that's do a pretty early. good way to like try to avoid lines too. Because I yeah. do think that what we'll see is a good chunk of Trump's support coming from election night itself and a good chunk of Biden's support coming from mail-in ballots, but it's going to be the mail-in ballots that are going to be challenged, right? right. Um, and that's where, you know, I don't know. I don't know, who knows? <laughs> Tell me your thing about the alternate universe. What's that? If, if there's an alternate universe where um, Al Gore won. Al Gore had won. There oh, was yeah. no Iraq War. Yeah. You know, like. <laughs> well, yeah. Think about it. If the um, if Gore Gore v uh, Bush v Gore uh, turned out differently, you'd have. Oh, also, you know what I learned? You would uh, have Iraq. Wouldn't have Afghanistan. I think you still have Afghanistan. You do? Uh, maybe. I maybe. I don't think that. Yeah. I think. I, I think 9-11 still happens. I think that was like a colossal yeah, well, yeah. information yeah. gap. And I think the bloodlust was too high. Yeah. I mean, we go to war over everything. So I, I think Afghanistan still happens. I don't know. I don't think Iraq happens. Like that was, that was like Iraq. Cheney and that Rumsfeld and, and, yeah. and Poppy Bush. So, yeah. I mean, that was a way of, yeah. Poppy Bush's, you know, revenge kind of thing. Mm -hmm. That was a stupid war. Not that any of them are any good. But but think about it. So if that had happened, we wouldn't be in Iraq, maybe Afghanistan. Although Gore would have been president, though. This is the thing. Mm -hmm. And I think a Democrat in that position may have been able to assuage the voices of... Uh, maybe, his, but then remember that the majority of Democrats voted for Iraq. Well, they did, but there was... Again, Bush was putting that pressure on. Bush was the president. He was pounding the drums for, you know, and that was leadership in, in theory. So, uh, which I, I never understood because all, all the evidence was there that there were no weapons of mass destruction mm -hmm. in Iraq. So right. how anybody, how Colin Powell came to that conclusion is a mystery because all you had to do was read a couple of articles I thought Colin Powell, Powell was the one that was like, there aren't, yeah. or, or he, he was at least like one of the few cabinet members that was like, Iraq, let's not do Iraq. He, he was, but right. he was the one that they forced in to do the, uh, he did the old pottery barn analogy. You know, you break right. it, it's yours. But he was the one that was forced to go in and with right. a little yellow cake powder and say, right. this is what they're doing. And he had no proof of that. I mean, all right. that stuff was disproved even before the uh, the whole Iraq thing was, right. was covered as a as a fake. So, and to this day, they still deny it. I mean, I mean, uh, I don't think Powell does. I think Powell regrets it. But I think everybody else is like, yes, oh. we did the right thing. No, they're Just they're for sure around. like still st still we did the right thing. Yeah. Still, there are WMDs. Best yeah. case scenario is okay. We were wrong about the WMDs, but Saddam Hussein had to go, so we still did the right thing. Yeah, well, there's right? a million like, other dictators. They'll, they'll move the goalposts. Go after them too, and then, then we'll talk. Right. 
and now actually we we're hosting it too so it's like <laughs> yeah but and then i mean also i i i think we still wind up in war to some degree whether it's a full even if it's afghanistan if, if it's a full scale well, war yeah. maybe not i don't know um but then there's other things too like how do we handle the recession and the housing crisis right uh we would probably be in a slightly better position when it comes to the climate change policy yes um, yeah so, so Gore, there, there Gore are president that would have led to a hillary um presidency i mean a barack presidency and a hillary presidency because maybe you know, i do think i do think it is really hard for one political party to hold the off the white house for for more than two or three consecutive terms. I think a lot of Americans do just tend to go, well, we had eight years of this, we had eight years yeah, of this, let's yeah. see Let's see what the other. And yeah, then I think yeah. that that's sort of one of the things we kind of discount about Donald Trump in 2016 was he was the change candidate. And so people who yeah. don't really spend that's too true. much time there thinking about a, it was just like, well, we had eight of years of Obama and my life is not materially better or not that much better. But, Let's see yeah. what the other person can do. Because Clinton, especially having been in Obama's administration, was a continuation. Which is sort of funny right. about this election, because so is Biden. So it's sort of like Biden is the change candidate now, but not in like the truest sense, because he also is like a continuation of Obama. Yeah. So it's sort of an interesting dynamic, well, which sort of throws don't... all this expectation out of the window. Like, what I don't understand is how anybody trusts any ideas coming out of the Republican Party. They're completely bankrupt. They have no original. You could you could look at the Democratic Party and say they're wackos mm -hmm. in terms of their ideas. They're, you you can make arguments that it's socialism or whatever, but they're, they're, there's a diversity among I, of ideas. Right, it's a big tent party, so you'll get. A yeah, lot you ideas. don't have that, and and um, trickle down economics has been proven not to work, and mm -hmm. yet people still give the keys to the tractor so they can drive it in the ditch. Mm -hmm. Why do you give? Why do you do that? Why do you give a government that has tried and tried and tried with this trickle down thing and give tax breaks to the rich and none of it comes down to you? Oh yeah, crumbs come down to you, right. but you're not materially better for years. Well, I yeah, mean, it's, honestly, like first, it's first off, even if trickle down economics works, I mean, just think about what you're saying. It's like, we want to give more money to them at the top yeah. so that it like some of it trickles down to you. Yeah. It's yeah. like, what if we just like, what if you valued us? <laughs> yeah, right? and pushed up. Right. Right, if wealth, um, because, and that's what we did in the 50s. In the 50s, you know, the jobs were in the, for the middle class, it brought the middle class to, to life, mm -hmm. and the economy was driven by spending by the middle class, not from the top down. Corporations are being charged, you know, 80, 90% corporate taxes. Mm -hmm. Maybe not effective corporate taxes, but pretty close. Now it's, you're lucky if you get paid, you know, 25% if they right. pay any, right? I mean. Well, it's also like the economy in and of itself is, everybody has like some idea, but nobody really knows, right? Like people, the yeah, conventional yeah. wisdom now is that you tax, if you, if you, if your income tax or your like your sales tax or all these taxes for like the mega rich are like too high, that stifles job growth. And we kind of look back at like the last 30 years and see that like, yeah, things have been sort of on a downward spiral. But then you go back to the 40s and 50s and see how high the income tax rate was and how that didn't stifle. Right. Right. Or we talk, or you hear this a lot too, like we can't raise the minimum wage because then prices for everything else go up, people lose jobs. Right. But more often than not, what you actually see is no real discernible change. Prices right, maybe labor, go up like a little bit. Insignificant Labor is an insignificant part of the cost of a product. In some right. products, that may be true, but not in most products. In most products, labor is probably the least or at least a third of the mm -hmm. cost of a thing. And it's the materials and the supply chain that's the biggest cost mm -hmm. and manufacturing overhead, you know? Right. So how, you know, how many managers, middle managers and top managers do you have, for example? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Get rid of those. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, there's a lot to like, you know, Everybody, everybody only cares about the debt and the deficit when it's the other party in power, when it's the other right? Part. Like, I get, I, I admittedly get fatigued with Republicans who talk about fiscal responsibility and talk about the debt and the deficit. And I'm like, you literally started two never ending wars and then cut right. taxes. 
what is fiscally responsible about that? Yeah, yeah. Like, honestly, like, Obama, the, like, bleeding heart liberal Democrat socialist, which he wasn't, obviously, but, like, he did, he, he had much, like, he was the most fiscally responsible president we've had this millennium well, yeah. so far. De- <laughs> like, Bush the, uh, wrecked the, the economy, Trump wrecked the, the economy. The deficit came down most under his, uh, under his watch. Right. And then it came back down after the Republican. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it's, it's, it's the thing, like, I understand being like, okay, we've had a number of years with Democrats and things don't feel like discernibly fixed. Right. I understand that. Let's see what the Republicans have, but it's also like the last two Republican presidents have been absolute unmitigated disasters. Right, like mm-hmm. you have to go back to the late '80s, George H. W. Bush, to be like the last Republican that's fine. Fairly, like yeah. I, I wouldn't vote for any of the Bushes. Uh, I don't think I would argue he was a good president, but it wasn't an unmitigated disaster. He His wasn't war a social... lasted like a week, so yeah, you know, he wasn't like... a social pariah or whatever. Right, um, I think Reagan's administration was, was a disaster long term. Yeah, but in the in the moment, wasn't well. Um, he mortgaged the future, right? That's right. The, those bubbles were built under his watch, so those stock bubbles, right? So, uh, so I just think like, but you know, it's funny. The the big thing has always been every election since I've been voting. Are you better off than you were four years ago? Which I think is the wrong question to ask. Mm-hmm. I hate that question because it's not just about, am I better? It's about, is the country better? So, but I've been privileged enough to say, I've been in a social class where mm-hmm. my, my position hasn't really been worse, mm-hmm. maybe marginally better, but generally not the same. So I, in theory, I should have voted for the party in power every single time, and I didn't because the logical question is, is the country better off, not am I better off? Well, this is the thing too, is like, it's the idea that, ev- voters are primarily motivated by self-interest like Racism. specifically self-interest um or Racism. or even just like political philosophy or ideology right but what winds up happening is one of the strongest motivators is identity and also right. yeah political philosophy is a thing right like if you're if you're more concerned about you know am i better well, off and you don't yeah. care about the overall state like if right. you look at the last four years and say, well, I made more money than I did under Obama, so yeah, I'm going to vote for Trump. It, like, I'm willing to like throw all of these other people under the bus. You know, your political philosophy is ultimately probably coming down to, I don't think that the government should be involved in like solving problems. Anything. Right. right. But, but, but here's the thing. Despite my feeling that way, I, I, the only other time I felt close to that was when Reagan was running. And I thought, you know, I am a little bit nervous this guy's going to blow up the, the world mm-hmm. because he kind of was really nuclear hawkish. Yep. And I really was worried he was going to push the button. So mm-hmm. that was a little bit of intrepidation. So that, so I obviously didn't vote for Reagan, but, but it turns out that he didn't blow up the world because he turns out he was a pragmatist more than he was a, you know, a Republican. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but, but I can honestly say, we all of us are less safe because of this damn pandemic now i know i know he didn't bring the pandemic here i don't think he did but he certainly made the problem worse and is making the problem worse and therefore by his by logical extension i am less safe i personally am less safe and i've never been in that position before and i have to believe there's a million millions of other people Mm-hmm. that feel the same way that yeah i've been living a pretty good life but shit i could you know i could catch this thing and die because i have underlying conditions and whatever even if you didn't I mean, you know even if you didn't right, right. so i um, think we're all less safe because of this covid thing never mind the the fact the economy lost 21 million jobs and has only got half of them back it's right. going to take another decade before those jobs come back. and the other part of it too mm-hmm. is you know, the Trump administration right now is literally suing to overturn the ACA and yeah. let insurance companies kick you off of pre-existing conditions. But if you have any foresight whatsoever and can see next year, if that happens, I mean, yeah. how many people who will recover from COVID but have long-term conditions 
will exactly. then get, be denied or kicked off of their insurance. The insurance companies the are smacking COVID related the COVID-related pre-existing yeah. conditions. Yeah, it's just because think of what they're going to have to lay out with all these uh, pre-existing conditions. They, they can deny them. Right. And there's going to be more of them after a pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. Whether whether you want to say uh, only really a hundred thousand people died, the other hundred thousand people would have died no matter what because they had these other underlying yeah. issues, right? Which, first of all, that's still way too many people. But again, you're still talking about millions of people who have dealt with this infection, of which m substantially more people than who have died are dealing with like lingering effects. And not right. only does has the Trump administration done nothing to help anybody either with COVID or to help people like stay home to avoid getting it. But yeah. now they're actively making it harder for those people to get insurance on the other side of it. But, and that's right. that thing where like, you know, same thing with like Hurricane Marina, Marina, Hurricane Maria or uh, Katrina under Bush, right? It's yeah. like the president isn't to blame for hurricanes, but when people yeah. start dying because we don't respond to it, that is on the government. Yeah. And I think that's yeah. another part of this too, is like, you know, I don't blame Trump for COVID, for the virus yeah. existing, but I, it's impossible, especially at this point, um, especially after the tapes that came out about, like, yeah. first of all, I don't, part of me is like, I don't really know what is different. Like we already knew that he was lying back yeah. then anyway, but now we, we didn't need word word to tell us that. Right. But yeah. Um, I'm also kind of annoyed, like, that feels like that should have come out in the moment. Yeah. And not but, saved I mean, for a book deal. I, I know, but every, everybody is all fucked up. I mean, you got Bolton who does the same thing. Oh, and yeah. So what, the, what the hell is wrong with people? Right. You know, it's like, they're they just making such shitty decisions. I actually watched that Comey thing, mm -hmm. just for sh shits and giggles. And, and it, did, it did position Comey in a, in a better light, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, meaning that he was more well-loved among the FBI, although they certainly gave the indication that there were plenty of Trump supporters in the FBI at that yeah. point in time. I mean, I so, yeah. But, but he, um, but, and nobody was making the right decisions. I still don't understand Jim Comey's decision about that whole thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, why would you, first of all, if you do all this research and find that our emails have, there's no criminal intent, mm -hmm. why would you, now maybe he thought he was throwing Hillary a bone, Mm -hmm. But why, if, you're, if your policy was or norm was, we don't do things to influence the election within a certain time frame, why would I say the first, make the first announcement, which then precluded having to, when, when the other shoe dropped and Anthony Weiner's emails came through, mm -hmm. you wouldn't have to look like an asshole saying, oh, gee, we have to reopen the case. You should, and they shouldn't have responded to that either. Mm -hmm. it's like, Nobody was making decent decisions. Oh, well, they were just seeing there were there were people on his staff who started to talk him out of it. Yeah, I, I know the, st the staff was logical. He was, I, and I don't know why. He, I guess he was a little bit of a boy scout, and he said, "Well, we got to do, we got to do the truth." Yeah, it's like right. you don't have to, you know, the timing of the truth is unless you were purposefully hiding something for the per effect of having to change the uh, the outcome. If your policy is we don't announce regardless you're covered by the policy that's so right. all he had to say to the congress mm -hmm. you know i i don't understand but, and he was gonna get fired anyway right. regardless you know yeah i mean it's so. it's funny to try to think back to like that first year and all of the things that came up then um and kind of even in the you know there was the whole thing about like requiring a loyalty oath that yeah all of this stuff is just like yeah, I, yeah, and I believe those scenes. I and mean, he said those scenes were uh, pretty pretty accurate to what his recollection was. Yeah, uh, and I believe those scenes are probably true in terms of what Trump said. And, yeah, uh, because he was there. He and he and Trump were the only ones in the room. So right to kind of and it all, like, I mean, especially at this point, it's like, like yeah. why is it harder to believe? Why is that harder to believe than yeah. the idea of like Donald knowing Trump? knowing what we know now? Right. And the other thing that was driving me crazy is this was all happening. This, these email things were all happening around the time they were starting to make the connections with the Russia connections mm -hmm. and, and how nobody made the connection between the Hillary emails and the Russian link and say, maybe we better not make the announcement because there might be a connection 
might be a connection just for that alone. And I just don't understand the decision making at all. And yeah. it's the same thing like Woodward's thing, you know. Now he may have had, you know, uh, um, other reasons for for delaying it. I don't know. Maybe he needed the time to get the book together. And um, I mean, he was writing a book. He wasn't. He's not a social. You know, uh, no, but you don't think like if you come across, especially while he's like publicly lying and making a pandemic response even worse and like sowing misinformation, you don't think you would feel personally like, you know, I know I'm trying to put this book together, but people should hear that the president is literally lying to them right now. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I mean now a, at a certain point, like, like, I don't know, like, uh, but I also it's Bob Woodward, right? Like this, yeah. it, he's, he is like, he's a reporter. Like that's what people know yeah. him as. Yeah, no, right? it's true. He's not just, he's not just like a f- fiction author, right? Right. And, and so I do think like, if you are going, if you're going to argue that we need these people, like the, with the press to keep our government honest and to like, they provide a very valuable service to our democracy, then you can't put that behind a paywall. But, but they're not, in, but in they're not, situation. yeah but they're not part of the formal institution. They ask they're part of the fourth estate. They're referenced generally in the first amendment, but they're not referenced specifically. They, they have no legal, I mean, they're not, nobody elects them. Nobody, you know, oversees them. Well, sure. I guess the FCC to a certain extent, but, and, and other, uh, other things. But so is there a moral obligation if I'm a journalist, as opposed to Bolton, who was a public servant, who did have an obligation, to report under oath before he set his book off. That was a, that was a conflict of interest there. I mean, he, he should have for sure. Right. Taken, taken. No, I I don't mean to argue that Bob Woodward is under the same sort of legal obligation, but I think when you kind of look at it from a moral perspective, like I, I don't, I don't know how you, to me, it would be sort of like if you were like working on a book and you found out about family separations, like months and months and months ahead of time, but you were like, oh, well, I want to put out a book in six months, so I'm not going to sound the alarm on this yet. I feel yeah, like, ethically, ethically I feel like the ethics video. there is still, I mean, that's, that's also like, even regardless, I mean, this country punishes. But you, but you don't know. I mean, lawyers. maybe he had to wait for corroboration. You know, maybe. you don't know what, what the details I don't know were. what there is to corroborate on like literally a like tape. a tape. Yeah, you know, but you gotta. I don't get think you have to wait. Sources. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but also, but like at the same time, it it really doesn't change anything. It's just like now no. definitive proof that he yeah. was lying, which I think everybody yeah. sort of knew because you know you had like Dr. Fauci and other scientists being like, actually, that's yeah. not true. What he's saying is not true. Yeah. Um, but I think the bigger issue is that it wasn't just that he was wrong it was that he knew the information but was intentionally lying about it right it, yeah. it's not just we think that masks don't matter we think that like young people are safe now it's yeah. it's like oh actually while he was saying those things he knew that the data was the opposite right yeah. um, but it still won't deter people no um, well, I don't understand why every time they hate that subject came up, nobody talked about the idea that some, you know we follow science and sometimes science is based on data and incomplete data will lead to one result, complete data will lead to another result. That's how science works. All you have right. to do is tell this guy, obviously, you know, I don't know who you paid to take your SATs, but that's, you know, the scientific method, it's the first thing they teach you in like grade school science. Oh, maybe you go they don't with do the that anymore. I don't know. I guess not. He never went to school anyway, so. Got to gotta cut. Got to defund schools. Yeah. Uh, don't talk to me about smart. Don't, you better not talk to me about smart. <laughs> when he said that, it's like, well, that's a really ironic statement. You just don't know how ironic it is. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. It is a lot. Um, I don't know. So I don't know. Is he gonna is he gonna make it out for the next debate? Is the question? I guess. I that was the other thing is people were arguing that he's faking it to get out of the next debate. Yeah, I, and that would be I would be shitting a brick if I were him because he's got to go in front of people. I don't know what it matters though. Like, 
like I, I don't necessarily understand I don't think that the pool of people who get things from the debates is that big right yeah. like I think kind of everybody watches it as like infotainment in a way where it's, yeah, like it's more about like seeing my guy win like oh my yeah. guy's gonna destroy your guy and there are people like I mean the, the networks themselves have like undecided voters in there and talk about their what they their takeaways are but I think overall like I mean it was never a question like who won the debates in 2016 right, right? like I well, think Clinton, if I'm remembering correctly, sort of like weakened over time, yeah. but still was like by the third debate was still like the clear winner and polls were constantly showing that she would like get bumps from from the debates. And then, yeah. you know, I know that there are a myriad of reasons why she didn't win the election, but like it didn't like Mostly the, sexism. The, yeah. the, the people, the people that voted for like the, I don't know, like it didn't see the debate didn't really seem to move the needle in any sort of meaningful way. Yeah, as right? I remember. And I think did. the same thing now where I think like Donald Trump is who we know he is. Joe Biden is more or less who we know he is. Mm -hmm. I, like this is like, like you're car it, you you watch it's it like for those racing. moments. I'm sorry. It's like car racing. People watch car racing so they can see the accidents. They yeah, I'd rather see, not watch democracy crash. <laughs> No, but I mean, they were going to see it, who but... was going to collapse. Yeah. Was Biden going to stutter himself into a coma, mm -hmm. or was uh, or was uh, um, Trump going to make fun of him for stuttering? I swear mm -hmm. to God, a few times I thought he was he was. Well, first of all, we know he was pushing his buttons mm -hmm. to to uh, increase the stuttering, which that alone, you know, should should disqualify you for the presidency. That's like a. It's like a Dr. Mengele trick. <laughs> I mean, we have like, what, 2,000 reasons that should have disqualified him? Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, so I, I guess if I'm like, I don't know. If I'm Trump, I don't necessarily see what difference the debate makes, especially after 2016. And like, I, I, but I guess on the other hand, like, like, I think that there's a reason why the focus of the campaign has been on trying to figure out ways to delegitimize it or take it to the courts mm -hmm. or send it to the House because that will let him steal the election, right? There's a reason why I think they're focusing on those tactics and not how do we win the election. And I think it's because when you look at the polls, he's like down pretty, pretty substantially. Yeah. And so I think at this point, you know, I mean, I know everybody has a lot of PTSD about 2016, but yeah. like, if you're the Trump campaign, like you're, you're not hoping for these numbers, no. right? You don't look at these numbers and say, say, I feel good, right? So I think that they're sort of like, well, at this point, we probably can't win this legitimately. Yeah. So that's why they're not really engaged. Like even, even like the clips that I saw, I didn't watch the debate proper, but I did watch a bunch of clips. Like it didn't even feel like, like in 2016, there was a lot of, at least like some policy ideas, right? Like build the wall, right? Yeah. And and repeal and replace. But I feel like there was like, I felt like what Trump was doing in the debates was just throwing pasta against the wall to see what was well, cooked. <laughs> I'm telling you, he was tr trying to trigger right. Biden and just stuttering. I mean, that was, it was it was repetitive. It was it was uh, switching topics. All the things the stutter, you know. And, and Joe honestly handled it pretty well, but he's been dealing with bullies for his stuttering for his whole life. Mm -hmm. So that's what he didn't count on. Yeah. So, so Biden comes out looking a little bit better in terms of being more presidential. And yes, his answers weren't that great either. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, the whole defund the police, oh, you didn't watch the whole thing. No, I didn't watch it. I mean, he, you know, he comes out and says, well, I'm not for defunding the police, but as opposed to like defining what that was, but then he does, but he doesn't say, but when we say that, this is what we mean mm -hmm. to try to educate along the way. So why do you say, well, I'm not for defunding the police? Because that's the buzzword that right. knuckleheads in his party are going to understand. Not, oh, we're going to repurpose them funds, or we're going to try to find other ways to police that are less mm -hmm. toxic, right? I mean, right. Yeah, I mean, also some of that, to be a little bit fair to Joe Biden, I think a lot of that is like not really like conducive to the like 
you have two two minutes to answer this question. Yeah. And, right. Like I just don't think that the, the TV debate format is designed no. for meaningful. Yeah. Like, the town hall, that's where you can go right to the person and use that whole empathy thing. Right. And that's yeah. where he'll he'll do better if they have that debate. But right. Yeah. I mean, I think about it too. Like, even like the classic TV debate, right? Is Nixon and Kennedy. Nobody yeah. knows anything about what either of them said, right? Like the only yeah. thing that they know is that Nixon was sweating a lot and yeah. seemed shady. Go for it. We watched that uh, go, uh, that uh, Frost Nixon thing. Oh, yeah, oh, I yeah. told you that. <laughs> yeah, it was really interesting though. It was it was so funny how the uh, you know David Frost. I I guess I knew who he was. He was a Playboy entertainer. I mean, it was not a a news guy. Mm -hmm. But damn, by the last that last um, thing when they actually did Watergate, Mm -hmm. he did his homework and just nailed him. Just nailed him. Mm -hmm. Ah, Nixon was a creep. Yeah. But it's funny because I think if you ask me, would I take Nixon or Bush or Trump? I would take Nixon. Oh God. Which is like Nixon weird was, to say. Nixon was psychotic, as psychotic as Trump, but the norms, I guess, were a little bit stronger at the time. So, yeah, I mean, the Republicans actually stood up to him. Which, go well, figure. that was yeah, yeah. I mean, there was also. I mean, it's it's funny to think about like the last time that like the closest that we ever came to overturning the electoral college was with like mm-hmm. Nixon and Republican support in the sixties. It was the 70s and especially Reagan in the 80s where they were like, oh, we can inflate this to make it seem like we have more support than we do. Right. And, and the that's the only way they're going to, they're going to, and demographically in the future, they knew mm-hmm. that's the only way they were going to be a viable party. Mm-hmm. You know, God forbid you actually change your policies to actually increase the voting base. Well, it's sort of funny to, like, do you remember in 20, was it 2012, 2013, just after Mitt Romney lost, the Republican Party mm-hmm. ran like, like they, did like an internal report and we're like we need to start moving more to the center to appease to more like latino voters yeah and they opted to go in the complete opposite direction <laughs> like they were well, like they, we we see your report we're gonna go with fascism instead well and they they do they they are trending toward latino but because the strictly you know politically conservative not even just the socially conservative because there are socially conservative African Americans <laughs> and Latinos that are not like, you know, let's let's go reinvade Cuba. That right. kind of mentality. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're they're a con- social conservatives. They should could be a- appealing to, but they're not because at the same time they're you know cutting SNAP benefits, they're closing schools, they're you know defunding, mm-hmm. you know Head Start programs, all the things that those people use right. in the neighborhoods where they're from. Right. And it's like, I mean, I, I think that this has been changing more too, just as like the, you know, there's a ge- definitely like generational gaps in like every demographic. Right. Mm-hmm. So like you see a lot of black voters tend to be more socially conservative, but a lot of young mm-hmm. black voters tend to be more liberal or progressive. Right. So you see this gender, this generational gap kind of everywhere, but you think about it too. And you think like, a lot of like older black voters are like very religious, very like family values, very like socially conservative, like would be at home. And and even like in a lot of cases, like kind of financially like conservative too, would probably find a home in the Republican base if they could get outside their like white supremacy, white nationalism. And 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 that that too, yeah. Right? Like, you know, and and just the refusals that be like, because the other thing too is like a lot of people will point out like in the 93, 94 crime bill that a lot of black community leaders were calling for more police too. But right. it's because they were they were also calling for increased funding in like job programs and housing right. and uh, education. Right. And what they just got was policing. Right. So you can't like just even, say, well, yeah. they were asking for it too and ignore yeah. everything else that they were asking for that you ignored. Yeah, right? and, yeah. and stuff like that, where it's like, if you just like listened, you could like actually expand your base, but they can't because, yeah. you know, putting America first means putting like white Anglo-Saxon Americans first. Yeah. Right? And, and well, the one thing you say about Trump is, boy, he turned this rock over and maybe this is we, what we needed because mm-hmm. this has been going on under the covers for 
400 years. I mean, mm -hmm. not 400 years, but under the covers, but since, you know, civil rights, right. everything went on the ground at that point. So mm -hmm. maybe this is what we needed was him to kick the rock over and it's not going back. I, I don't see how, I mean, we need to deport these freaking, uh, first of all, the KKK should be an outlawed organization. They should mm -hmm. be arresting every one of them. This is, goes to my theory of punch a Nazi when you see one. Mm -hmm. You don't need a reason. If he's right. a Nazi, punch him. Right. It is innately self-defense. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. <coughs> yeah, I mean, there's also a lot of ways, too, that, like, it's it's funny, I almost don't know if if people have fully grasped just how reliant we are on norms and traditions and not codified yeah. law. Um, I think Trump has also done a good job in exposing that. Just like, oh yeah, they don't have to, yeah, presidents, okay. presidential candidates don't have to show us their tax returns. They don't have to prove that they don't have conflicts of interest. That was just like a norm, right? No. You wait? I'm sorry. Um, hey, am Chubby. Are you interrupting your podcasting? No. Bring me, give, give me Chubby. <laughs> I shouldn't call him Chubby. He is Chubby. You call him Chunky. Do you need that? Or... Oh, yeah, I have one. Uh, I mean, oh, I thought I had one. What's going on? I want to Um, Jack is here. Oh. Nice. Where, where are you headed, Kate? Honestly, it's just on West Street, like right outside of Little Street. Oh, it's somebody, okay. Yeah, I can have a home day for this. Oh, look at those eyes. He might be a little bit tired. Yeah. Same. Natural spring and then kind of Hey, you. Up. See Uncle Dan? Whoa. <laughs> Just because hey. face first into the camera. <laughs> hey, Jack. Hey, Uncle Dan. Did you watch yeah. the debates? <laughs> How do you feel about Donald Trump's performance? There is he no watched the baby debates. Page. That's a good. That's a good face for it. Seems like it we should have baby debates. That would be funny. There is another bottle with <laughs> go. Like slower go, go. nipple that you can try. Okay. He's just those hungry. eyes. I don't know if we'll be hungry because okay. I could. Nice. Eat so what else do you want to talk about? We talked about politics. <laughs> oh well, so I was just sort of going to say actually about there's yeah. like. Um, this, uh, the whole thing about like there's a Supreme Court seat opening up in this election just like in 2016. Yeah. But also, I kind of forgot all about that blip where Clinton had pneumonia and that was like a huge controversy oh, yeah. and now Trump's yeah. got COVID and... Yeah, it's, and we're supposed to... He's, of course, he's good. <laughs> yeah, of course, we're supposed to walk around on eggshells and, right. and, and pray three times a day for him. I don't think I realized either that, um, what's her, I already can't remember her name, the, the Supreme like Court nominee. Oh, Amy Conan Barrett or whatever. So right. like Sasha Conan Bryant. Uh, Apparently she was like a Hello. clerk or like worked yeah, for Scalia. under Scalia. Right, but also like during the like floor, uh, Gore v. Bush yeah, great. case. So, you know, it's like, uh, they're not even She's got some experience subtle. cheating. Yes, I've previously thrown an election. You're hired. <laughs> You're hired. So your anniversary is coming up? Ours, yes. Third yeah. 11th. The, the uh, baptism. 40 years. 40, 40 years. years. 40 years a slave. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, I didn't think about that. Uh, uh, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that that's Bob actually. She's the slave. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my goodness. Nice Welcome burp, to the pod. Bring up another one. We'll yeah, vote on it. Nice burp. <laughs> we'll vote, yeah. but there'll be weighted votes. Whoop. 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 Look at that. So how, Whoop. how often does Kate come over with Jack? Um a couple times a week sometimes. Nice. Usually. At least once a week usually. Yeah. No, look oh, at that. look at that. Yeah, smile. Mm. She likes to give dad snuggle time. Yeah. They're actually we're going to go uh, check out a potential daycare yes. situation. In in town? Whoop. She says it's right on West Street. Yeah, so she says it's like literally a couple houses down from Little Street. So hmm. yeah, that's it. I kind of remember there's one house there that has like a fenced in area with tons yeah, of yeah, like, I remember that. So they must do Oh daaycare. yeah, okay. I think I know. Yeah. yeah. You smile, Uncle Dan. Why she's been struggling because so many of the places closed. 
Oh, you talking yeah. to Uncle Dan? He's talking? He's talking politics. Yeah, Mitch McConnell, right? What's <laughs> his deal? What did he say? Let's teach him to say, fuck the police. <laughs> I was going to videotape, but not if you're going to swear. <laughs> not if you're swear, It's Grandpa. not a swear, it's a title to a song. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Shots, 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 shots. I know. That's a title to a song, too. I think the song is just called Shots. All right, whatever. I guess I don't know what the song is called, but the lyrics are shots, 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 shots. Yeah. What are you doing, Jackie? You're getting excited for the whale watch? I am very excited. I brought some Dramamine. Nice. So I don't know if I'm getting nervous for the whale watch. Mom's nervous. It's going to be so much fun. It'll be cold. But it'll be mm. fun. Yeah. Yeah. So I've never been on one, but I, I'm dying to see some whales. So I need to talk to Whoa. Emily about the timing so mm. I can figure out like, what time she wants us to be at her yeah. place so we can figure out what time to I be. I imagine it's an early morning thing. Well, no. No, we, we took we the afternoon session. The, oh, like, interesting. Yeah, so it'll because be. Because the problem was the early one was like 8.30 eight, eight, yeah, or 9 eight. in the morning. Yeah. Which we would have had to been like up at like five or six. Um, 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 um. And I just thought it would be better here, for dad Eddie. to be able to Eddie, come here. not do that. So I think it's like at one or one thirty. And I mm -hmm. think it's like a four hour thing situation. Right. So, four hour tour. So we'll pick you up. We'll go to Emily's. She said she would drive from there. So to the you place. Like drive your car if you want. Yeah. yeah. So she use her car. So Last night we were out there dress shopping. Yeah, I told him she oh, she, she found a dress. Him? Yes, she said yes. Uh, yes to the dress. And then we went and ate. Wait for it. We got a new thing to add to Dad's repertoire. We, oh, telling. we already had this conversation. Yes, so sorry. Have wings. that's okay. Wings. So now we can have wings. Nice. And I'm gonna have. I think I'm gonna have turkey this Thanksgiving. So. Yes. Yes. So yes. Mom doesn't have to make another tofurkey. No tofurkey. Yeah. Which uh, nobody should eat tofurkey. No, it was a reason. I like tofurkey. Yeah, I, I mean, I, don't I, get me wrong. I'll eat turkey, but I, mean, I think tofu um, is like the one thing that I'm like, oh yeah, I like this. Like, yeah, the, uh, the the smart dogs don't do really are not any good. I well, mean, I, you many, put so much stuff on a hot dog. Sometimes it's like, what difference does it make? Yeah, I know. I, I like the smart dogs, but yeah, they're not. Well, it depends on the brand, but the uh, but the other stuff, not so much. But the tofu, I mean, the tofu actually almost tasted. Pretty close to turkey. Oh, yeah, I mean, more or oh, less, I like. Well, like, I don't, perfect. I don't just no. eat like tofurkey, right? Like, I buy like the slices and then put it in sandwiches, and you know, there's oh like, yeah, cheese yeah. and bread and like salad, yeah. like yeah. lettuce. That's and what mom and, gets in the fake. You, you buy the dad buys the light life. I know tofurkey. Yeah. I, I think tofurkey makes their own yeah. version of that. Oh right, yeah. yeah. We usually just buy the light life ones. Yeah, and those are pretty good. You put some mustard on the ham and on rye bread. It tastes like ham. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a pretty good chance that I am pre-diabetic. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I need to go back for um, another blood test, but I did a, you know, I got blood taken mm -hmm. at my uh, physical last week and they were like, did you eat before? And I was like, I'm pretty sure I didn't, but I can't really remember last Tuesday. Um, but I'm pretty sure that I didn't because I remember being in a rush. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm like, okay, well, these numbers don't look great. Um, so they were like, it's it's probably that you're pre-diabetic, um, but we'll do another blood sample and uh, next week and just make sure that it wasn't like a fluke test or in case you like ate a banana or something before. Yeah. Um, it's like I was like I definitely didn't eat a meal, but I guess it's possible that I had like rushed and grabbed a banana, but I'm pretty sure that I didn't. So we're gonna do another test, and if nothing is different, which I mean I don't think that I ate before, so I don't know what would be different. Um, so what is are they measuring your A1C and the glucose, or uh, they measure kind of just like everything. I got a whole bunch of lab reports. The yeah. glucose is it's in the like pre-diabetic range. Yeah. What do they consider pre-diabetic at this point? In terms of yeah. numbers, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, mine is one hundred two. Oh, that's not horrible. That's not horrible. I mean, one hundred yeah. is the top. One hundred is the top, I think, for the mm -hmm. abnormal. Well, I have to say, Dan, I my triglyceride is very high. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? My cardiologist doesn't really look at the triglycerides. Well, I mean, she was saying a, she was just saying like those things in really, conjunction with each other. Yeah, it yes. it relates more to things like pre-diabetes and. Right. 
she said that and I was like, yep. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. Well, how do you eat? I don't understand. Well, my mouth. He's like me. He's a lot of carb. He eats a lot of carbs, probably. Which Pastas I'm bad and chocolates. At. <laughs> Pastas and chocolates. What, what else, else is do it? it? The, the two food groups. <laughs> Tummy time. I mean, I've been trying to eat up? better. Um, yeah, you know, definitely up. working more vegetables, more fruits. I tried to get into smoothies a little bit. Um, yeah. But, you know, it, it is a lot of like pastas and. Uh, well, you buy pasta. at least the high grain pastas to. Uh, the I did for load. a while, but the last few months, I just buy whatever is the cheapest. Yeah. yeah. So that's the 99 cent. Not that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I, the, I keep have running into this problem where I don't really like beans, but yeah, that's like tough. A, cheap food, and B, like yeah. good for you. Uh, I do what eat kind them. Of beans? I just what am kind not of like, beans? I've tried them all. There's not like one the, type of bean that I'm like, oh, I bean, like this. The bean, those are, those are tasty. I usually go with like black or pinto. Yeah, black or, uh, or I and can I, see I, I don't dislike have. them. They're just never what yeah. I want to eat. Um, if they're not in a burrito, but you know, that well, you can mash like. up some uh, black beans into a uh, black bean burger, make your own black bean That's burgers. True. Yep. Yeah. I think get that some bean that way. Of course, be one of the other ingredients is usually breadcrumbs. So you'd have to replace that with true. something, you know? Yeah. All right. Well. And then exercise is another thing, but you are exercising. That's that. So yeah. She was like pointing out. It's like, okay, it's like your diet. I'm like, that's, yep. That's nope. That's a failure. I failed. And it's like stress. I'm like, have you? Yeah. Unemployed. Outside. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Failed yeah. that. Exercise. It's like, okay, I've done that. And then like sleep. I'm like, who's sleeping? Uh, <laughs> but I'm like, okay, I've got the exercise thing like covered. So I feel good about yeah. that. But you know, I mean, it also is like, it's not at a range where it's like irreversible or anything, but yeah. 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 And then she was saying like, this right. is the why you scream is- too. The 102 is just over the, the eight, top of the normal. And stay hydrated is the other thing. Right. You're drinking a lot more because that'll help. And Exercise helps. Losing as much as even five or 10 pounds helps. I don't have any weight to lose. I, everybody no, has to lose. Okay. Um, five pounds. Well, it's been a little bit hard too because I have like gained a little bit of weight, but I've also yeah. been working out. So it's like, is that weight gained because I'm eating garbage or weight gained because I'm putting well, on muscle yeah. or I mean I'm sure it's like a combination but it's like yeah when I do try to be but you what you I mean your weight your body weight ratio is probably normal it's yeah I mean mine is, mine is always off the chart because I've always been overweight but um it wasn't until I started getting I started with the cancer that my my metabolism was like <laughs> Yeah, hell of a but, weight loss program. Yeah, I know chemo. Yeah, does the body good? Right. Um, yeah. But I mean, well, how's your, your how's your how is your body weight compared to your height, your your BMI? And I like don't that. know. I don't think that they really like. I think I like mean, BMIs are hoax anyway. But. Yeah, I've like heard. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely not like like I feel like I'm like in normal range. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, so. Go back for, I'm going to do more blood tests to, uh, next week. And then we're going to reconvene in like January or February. Yeah. So, so cool. What, after what, the holidays, that'll work. But generally speaking, if <laughs> right. you're pre-diabetic, I think, then it's not like they're going to give you medication. Right. Not a pre- no, I, right. But there's going to be like, gonna, right. To see if I'm like making changes. A, talking to a nutritionist might not be a bad thing. I talk to Emily uh-huh. all the time. No, a real nutritionist. I mean, she's not. Oh, bro. she's no, not a licensed. I mean, no, only no. because I've been through this and I haven't been the best about. Oh, Jackie, it's okay. She'll get back. Um, you know, I did end up talking to a nutritionist. She kind of asked me what I ate and tried to make recommendations. She said, you know, even if you can just lose, like sometimes they'll say if you can lose like ten percent of your body weight. Like, I don't know what you weigh, but you know, even like 10 pounds, exercising a certain amount a day helps. I think I start with the diet because the, the, I mean, oh, yeah, for sure. And like there's a lot of ways to like my acid reflux, like yeah. you would have thought that I would have made those changes, but I started experiencing now, let me a lot ask of acid this. reflux. Do but... you drink a lot of juices? No. 
Okay, so water and milk, basically, or it's, I don't drink milk. Oh, so you don't drink it's milk. it's pretty much water. just water. You know, how do you uh, do that? I, what? Like iced tea? I do. I, I, in the summer, or I was tea. drinking some iced tea, yeah. but I mean, it's not really iced sweet. tea season. This and then every once in a while, like I had a drink. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and so. then I will drink. Like I do drink soda, but it's not like an everyday not thing. Not a lot. Yeah. Right. Um, water yeah. is generally ninety percent of what I drink. Yeah. So it's not yeah, the juices. It's, it's hard. And some of it's going to, you know, like, I don't want to say it's genetics, but there are just certain things oh, that. There definitely are. It's like, that plays a role. So. Yeah. yeah. I actually haven't had my blood work done in a while, so I'm not sure where I am. Because my mm -hmm. sugar level is usually always a little over. Because like 100 is the, is the number, right? It's mm -hmm. the top. Yeah. If they're really concerned, like if your number was really high, sometimes what they do is they send you you do like a, a one where you, you drink, they give you a glucose drink, they take your, your blood, and then they, you wait like, I don't know, 30 minutes or an hour, and they give you a second one. Mm -hmm. yeah, food that's a different, that's another, you know, one that they can do. If she, mm -hmm. she's just going by Well, you're in luck though, because insulin is as cheap as water. <laughs> yeah, apparently, yeah. <laughs> I, but I heard right, that. Though, kind of the issue is like, oh, what's the other thing that I have? Um, when your triglycerides are high and your sugar is high, your metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome. I don't know if yeah. you mentioned that. At all. So it could be the onset of that. But, mm -hmm. you know, you see what the next blood work is and you do what you can to try to yeah. tackle it. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's the year of lifestyle changes, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I guess. My it's, lifestyle changes. Shit, I didn't buy chocolate last week at the grocery store. You know, well, it's like. But the thing yeah. is, you're coming into the time of year where everybody's indoors now because. So you mm -hmm. need to find some. Uh, you should borrow my snowshoes. And do he some has snowshoes. snowshoes. Oh, you do? I have you snowshoes, want... and like oh, yeah. I have, I have like a weight bench. I have a little treadmill, yeah. and I have a rowing machine. So, mm -hmm. like, I'm not like <laughs> lacking in like yeah. exercise. Yeah. You need cardio stuff to to really get it. See, so you've been hiking a bit, huh? Yep. Yeah, hiking. Some of dad's, yeah. that's old honks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the roller coaster. That was my mountain biking. Route. I don't know how people ride bikes on that. Honest to God, I would always end up falling down these ditches, these like 30 foot ditches. Oh, yeah. How I'm not dead is a, is a mystery to me. I hated, I, you know, I hated mountain biking because it was so tense. But why did you do it? Was this like, I a, don't know. I don't know. Did I, you have friends I, who did it? And yes, I they, did have friends who did it. And they were really good at it. And I kept falling off the bike. But if you know, you like to see those uh, commercials with these people doing this single track. It's nice and flat, or, right? Right. And you're at the top of the mountain, and it's but it's not like that. It's more like the roller coaster. <laughs> right. Wait, uh, when did uh, you start doing uh, mountain, mountain biking? Oh, uh, that was uh, well. I said I've been riding for with Brian on the road for. I started on the road. Right. For about probably, probably close to twenty. 20. Yeah. I mean, it kind of goes back to, were you riding yeah. before you had the heart attack? Yeah, or I think so. Yes, I was. Yeah, because that's... I think you were doing a little bit. Yeah, so I started out with a steel and bike. That. And then I, when I got different bikes, I decided to get a mountain bike. But what I got was not like an off, just an off-road trail bike, mm -hmm. which is really what I wanted. So I could just go off these nice little trails. Mm -hmm. I got one of these like downhills, dually, you know, with dual suspensions. Right. That you're supposed to like... You basically ride up these mountains and then just go full bore down. But they have like motorcycle helmets, is what you're supposed to do. Oh, have. yeah, yeah. But it, you know, it was okay. It, it, it helped me with my uh, road handling skills because mm -hmm. you got to, you, you're looking at stumps every two, two feet. You got to look for tree stumps. Right. And, and then you got to, the other thing you got to do is you have to learn to, um, when you're going over rocks and things, you got to level, you got to level your feet because when you road bike, it doesn't matter where your feet are when you're pedaling. But if you're coming to a, a rock and you're like this, and the rock hits this, oh. you can like, you can like damage your. And a couple of times I've just knocked my the shit out of my uh, my pedals. So so you have to learn to as you're approaching an obstacle to go from this position to this mm -hmm. to avoid not only the wheel but to the but the the chain and everything else that you could damage. But I survived. I mean, it was. It was pretty tense, and then then you finish the ride, and you feel great. But it's not like road biking where you just sort of like zone in, and you can go for like fifty miles and just right, and and like pick up speed too, right? Like and pick up because I imagine you're not going. I mean, there there will no, be no. 
bursts, right? With mountain biking is what it seems like. Yeah, but but you don't. But more or less, I can't imagine like do, you're going full speed because you'll die. No, I would do you know on a flat, I could do twenty, mm-hmm. and then but but you don't you're not doing twenty on a road on a mountain bike for sure. Mm-hmm. Even downhill, you you're lucky if you hit you know fifteen or sixteen because of the t- knobby tires and you know. But and then so but so. So the mountain biking works on your balance, which is really good for the road. Mm-hmm. Road biking works on your stamina, which is really good for mountain biking. Mm-hmm. So they, they both contribute to each other. But um, there's a great documentary called Bicycle. That's uh, an English movie. It's an English documentary. Mm-hmm. And it, it talks about, the, that's where the birth of the mountain bike was from. Uh, Br- uh, was it Birmingham? It was somewhere like Birmingham, but uh, and it, it goes back to the 70s, and that's where they invented the uh, the first uh, rail trail. Hmm. Was it was coming from England, but it was really interesting how the the bike used to be the um, that big, you know, the big wheel with the little little wheel in the back. Oh yeah, yeah, that was that was crazy. And you had to be like an athlete to ride the damn thing. Mm-hmm. And then they invented the safety bicycle, which is what we know as the regular bicycle, because it was only for like athletic men, you know, right. people couldn't do it. And, and uh, when they came up with the safety bicycle, everybody started, started riding bikes mm-hmm. because it was just easier to get on and ride. So right. it, it's a really good documentary and it's got, uh, what's his name? Uh, Martin from the guy who uh, developed the, uh, the uh, like one of the first mountain bikes, but they talked about their, you know, the different demographics they were going after. Mm-hmm. and uh, the rise of bicycles in, in England, which eventually led to the world. So, What made you get into cycling in the first place? Uh, Brian. Mm-hmm. Um, he was a rider, and I didn't have a really decent road bike. I had this old Ross bike that was Uncle Joe's, and it had a baby seat on the back. <laughs> and so I'd go out with, like, cotton clothes. And so mm-hmm. we'd go, like, 13 miles and like, I would be soaked and the clothes weighed like another 10 pounds. Mm-hmm. So then I realized, he told me about, you know, well, you can get this technical clothing that where the sweat gets w- wicked away and you, you know, you don't, you don't weigh more when you get back than when you started. <laughs> um, so I started little by little, I started, I got a, I bought my first road bike for like 300 bucks, mm-hmm. a steel bike. And it was great. It was, it did me fine. And then each, as you get more addicted to it, it's, um, well, now I got to have, uh, you know, I got to have sh- shifters on the handlebars, the STI shifters, and I got to have clips because the clips make a big difference. Mm-hmm. And then you start buying the gear and that's how it happens. And then you just keep going up. So I had that bike, then I had the aluminum bike that had carbon stays. Then I went with the uh, mountain bike. Then I got the, uh, then I finally got the carbon fiber bike. It was just wonderful. I just the thing is so light. But I bought that mail order and I had my, my bike guy put it together for me. So I bought that. That was only a, that was about a thousand dollars. So that's as much as I'll spend. How much yeah. is Brian's? Brian's is probably a couple of grand. Yeah, mm. his uh, his bike. And they're they're just things of beauty. But uh, <laughs> but that that movie talks about the whole design, um, how they came up with the aero design, the Superman position. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, it's really interesting with the science involved in it. Mm -hmm. And a bike is pretty, you know, there's not much to it there in terms of technique. It's one of the most efficient uh, machines they've ever invented, you know, in terms of how it multiplies a human ability to do something. You know, Mm -hmm. walking on average two to three miles an hour to riding almost effortlessly to 15 to 20 miles an hour. You know, and it's such a great way to get around, Mm -hmm. you know. Were you like looking to get into like something exercising or? Yeah, it's just like, it wasn't competitive. Mm-hmm. It wasn't where I, I wanted to do races or things like that. Some people really get into the racing. Mm-hmm. That, they're fun to watch. Mm-hmm. We used to have the Criteriums in Northampton. And they would, it was so funny because they would put up these mats around these old oak trees, like where there were dangerous curves. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, that's so it could soak up the blood. <laughs> Because a little mat around the tree is not going to help, right? But yeah, well, uh, Brian liked Brian liked cycling with a group. I think you were yeah. more, you were either no, I I I do no, I do like, like riding with a group. I just 
this is like you never, you never joined a soccer club. <laughs> no, I wouldn't join a soccer club. I would never join a club that would accept me. Them. Them. <laughs> no, but I mean, no. sometimes I've had some decent run. Oh, this is so funny. That is so sweet. Um, sometimes you get on good rides. I mean, the, the charity rides were always good. Mm -hmm. The PMC was a blast. I mean, that's a lot of fun, even if you're not a rider. Mm -hmm. You could do 100 miles easy if you're in a group like that because you're always riding in groups of like 15 or 20 this, when you're riding with 5,000 people. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's so much easier riding in a group because you draft behind somebody and you're hardly spending any effort at all. And Does that so really make a difference? If always, it makes a huge okay. difference. It's one of those things that everybody says makes a huge difference, but whenever yeah. I watch it, I'm like, that can't make that much of a difference. No, it does. It really does. It's amazing. I could average, and for the PMC, I was averaging for the 100 miles, close to 20 miles an hour. Now, that's the slowest speed in the Tour de France, but I was also a 55-year-old guy doing this. So it goes to show you that drafting makes a big difference, mm -hmm. you know, that I could keep up that speed for that kind of time. Um, but yeah, it makes a big difference, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why they do it. That's why the teams do it. And the whole strategies with the tours and things like that, are, they're, they're, they're alien to this country because we're not used to having races in this country. Mm -hmm. Or weren't. I mean, we are now. But, um, but it's a whole different strategy in terms of how you, how you win and what you win, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it's just a, it's just a, a non-impact way. Now, granted, it doesn't do a lot for your upper body. It doesn't do a lot for, uh, you know, your bone bear, uh, weight bearing exercise that you need. So you mix it up. I was hiking, which, you know, I know mom always wants me to go for a walk. And it's like, walking is boring. Hiking is not. <laughs> I don't know yeah, why. You know, you know what it is? It's a, with walking, it's that old adage. It's location, location, location. Location, location. Right. right? But even, even the challenges, I mean, I like hiking up and down hills mm -hmm. and i like you know and it is location it is what do you see when you're on the you know when you're out there as opposed to just seeing your neighbors or seeing the road or mm -hmm. you know it's just not as challenging or as much fun yeah but uh I have you can't felt do that. you can't you don't think that you can do any no uh, my blood levels my hemoglobin levels are too although i am thinking about you know, when I uh, next infusion three weeks from now, I'm probably going to need a transfusion. Mm -hmm. Right after that, I think I might go meet my hiking buddies up at Mount Sugarloaf mm -hmm. and just go up the just go up the mountain on the road. I won't go through the trail, which is steeper. Right. And just see how I do. You know. Yeah. Because I'll have fresh blood, so I should be up to <laughs> nine ten. <laughs> fresh blood, so I should be able to do something and. Yeah. Well, I mean, walk. I know walking Arcadia is still walking, but it's yeah. Walk nice I, well, Arcadia is nice. Yeah, yeah. That's a nice. I would imagine. I are they they open? Yeah, yeah, they are. They're okay. open now. Can you drive? This is what I asked you the other day. Could you drive up whatever that road is? Yeah, up, too. Opposite the restaurant to go up the road of Mount Tom to somewhere where you could yeah. maybe walk around, but it's not so steep. Like, is there at any place that's on the flatter side? But it, it well, it drops down, like I said, to the quarry trail. That's the quarry trail actually comes out to that road, and the quarry trail itself is flat. So I could actually dr uh, drive to a point up there, walk down to the quarry trail, and then walk back up to drive home. I suppose I could. Yeah. But maybe I'll do some of the leaves so I could change more. Yeah, maybe it's I'll been funny because there's been a lot of. Uh, I mean. The, the, when I've gone on hikes, there have been stretches where it's like I can't really can't really tell where the trail is because there's so much leaves, so many yeah. leaves now. Yeah, I mean no, it's not that what, hard to figure out, but yeah. so it's like oh, I, I always think get, this was the trail. So how do you like the roller coaster trail? I like it to walk. I think it's um, it, it's a little bit shorter than I want it to be for a walk, but it's also yeah. like the other hikes that I've done have always been like up a mountain so it's very steep yeah um and not that there aren't any inclines or you know descents on the trail but they're not it's you're not walking up a mountain with it Do you ever um, go to um at the notch go into the notch side um and go to the uh, neuro neurotic it is a mountain but it's and it does no, I, yeah i've been up there yeah 
Oh yeah, yeah. That's I nice. went up there. I went up there, and they were doing like helicopter maneuvers or something. And I got oh, yeah, to good. the top, and literally, like a helicopter was like just over the tree line. Oh jeez. I'm just like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's great. Walk around wanting reservoirs. Yeah, it's not so. No, no. Mm-hmm. They actually, if you go Whiting Reservoir, halfway around there's an ed- exit from there, and if you go up that way, you get up to the mountain the mountain road, the, the paved road, and mm-hmm. you just go up the paved road a little bit and you can go to where the um, where the old ski resort used to be. Mm. And the backside of Mount Tom, it's actually pretty cool. Yeah. But the other one is there's a loop, I can't remember, it's uh, Lithia Spring or, you know, that, that's actually in uh, Hadley. Um, there's a loop that goes around the spring that's really beautiful, but it could be buggy. But this time of year, the bugs may not be maybe a problem. Mm. And it's around, it's relatively flat. Yeah. I can't remember the name of the, the, the loop though. It's been a while. I thought it was Lithia Springs, but I could be wrong. Mm-hmm. Do you go out on the kayak anymore? A little bit. Um, I took it out. I mean, I took it out to wear last week and, or earlier mm-hmm. in the week and it was like, it got too shallow. Yeah, um, too. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, 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 well, I, I do like going out at this time of year because um, it's like, it's not, the, the sun, even when it's like sunny, you know, you still put on the sunscreen, but it's not like oppressively hot. Yeah. So you're not like, oh, I hope that I tip over because I could really like dunk my head in the, the water, right? Um, except with all the bacteria in the water. I'm that's sure true, that's yeah. Good. Most places, yeah. Um, but I haven't recently, um, mm. yeah. How how durable are those things? I mean, I I haven't run into any issues with it. Um, I bump because it all you could the time. Take them, you could take them going downhill in the snow. Uh, uh, I don't know that that's like the best <laughs> idea. Well, you have a rudder on that thing, don't don't you? Yeah. Uh, I no, not on mine. Oh, okay. Well, no. all I know is the Ramex on my canoe is like indestructible. So I could, if I wanted to slide that thing down and then you, you can't put a hole in that thing. Mm-hmm. But I don't know about the, the kayaks, but. Yeah, I mean, I, I it's plastic, so uh, it's pretty yeah. durable, but like I no. hit it against, I mean, I, it's bumps, I hit and bump and scrape it against rocks all the time and there's no holes. Yeah, but, so it's like yeah. durable in that way. Um, yeah, but, but yeah. not designed downhill. Uh, I wouldn't say so, no. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, do you want my canoe? Do you have um, a use for it? It's, it's, I don't, it, you can manage I, it with one person, but. I guess that's the thing is like, I wouldn't not take it, but also like, I don't know if I would like take that use canoe it. out by myself. Yeah. You know, kind of a thing. Well, anybody can borrow it anytime. They yeah, want. they can. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the thing's unsinkable. It's got two, um, when we put it together, it's got two, uh, yeah, well, I was like two buoyancy ballast in the front eight. and back. I mean, you can literally fill that thing up with water and it won't sink. Mm-hmm. You just stay with the canoe and you're always safe. But no. Um, but yeah, I used to take it out on the Connecticut River. That was stupid. <laughs> that was really stupid. That's when I used to go shad fishing. But oh. Wow. I mean, I would anchor. I would tie myself up to, right, right. to a tree or something. And, and of course, an yeah, and I have an anchor, but the um, the, the current is so strong. Right. A couple of times, like God, if if I if I tip over, I'll be going down. I won't. They won't get, pick me up till Enfield. <laughs> I'll be like those coolers you see floating down the river. <laughs> but on lakes and stuff, it's fine. It's yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a little bit heavy, but uh, you know, nowadays I I would have a struggle getting it up on the canoe, on the car, but it's not, I mean, I managed for all those years. You know, you build them, you build a little, you know, shelf that you can get underneath it and lift it up and carry it over and it Mm -hmm. doesn't take much. Yeah. But but it's a, a, uh, it's not, it's a different experience. I mean, you're not uh, low to the ground and things like that. but you can. So it works. It works your body differently. Works your body right. differently. Yeah. Well, you have a rowing 
Yeah, yeah, he has a rowing machine. Well, I mean, it's a totally different rowing motion, right? Like, yeah, it's this as it goes. Like the, the rowing machine is sort of more like crew style, and then yeah. you know, kayaking is that the double yeah. panel, and then um, you know, kayaking usually you have like or uh, canoing you usually have canoe is using a paddle like yeah. this. Yeah. yeah, so they're all sort of like different motions working slightly different muscle groups, but. Um, did you get your DVD thingy or whatever that? You, no, I'm gonna bring gonna it. To, bring I'm gonna bring it to him. Because I know Joe Loftus so offered his too. You got oh, okay. Yeah, no, I, I, if you don't mind me borrowing it. Yeah, no, great. it's not a problem. It's just, it's just, yeah. uh, just a USB. I'm plugging and give it to you. Cool. Are you gonna? What are you burning? Uh, just working on some projects. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to. Hopefully it works. I mean, I haven't used it in a while, but. Yeah. I mean, I, it reads okay from DVDs, but mm -hmm. I haven't uh, tried to burn anything with it because I don't have any software. I'm not sure where Windows has. Oh, you're a Mac, though. Aren't yeah, you? I have Mac. I don't know. I but mean, I'm, probably, I'm sure I can find something, but yeah, you'll find something to burn. Um, yeah, There's I think I might there. need to go and start working on it. Okay. Um, but thanks for chatting. Okay, thanks, right. Dan. Well, I'll let you know what about what yeah, the plan about is Sunday. For Sunday. We'll let you know what time Whenever we're going to be. Find out what okay. it is. Be ready. I will. <laughs> All right. Okay. I love you. Smell you later. Love you. Bye. Smell you later.